Hey gamers, I am Snack 7 Great to be back guys with another video at last. I've had a bit of a meltdown over the past month and a bit. Uh, needed a break and it's done me good by doing so. So I thought if I'm coming back with another video, I've got to give you something that I've been promising you probably from the beginning of this year. Every video I've done, I'll give you a room tour. I will give you a room tour. Well, you know what? This is the room tour video. Uh, the Snake Pit 2017 2.0 room tour to be precise. So you're going to see a lot of changes, what I've taken away from the room, what I've added to the room, uh, how the game's looking. Uh, I'll go through in moderate detail. You know, this is no professional video. You're going to get mistakes. You're going to get me forgetting games. That's what a comment box is for. It's all fun at the end of the day. You know, I'll just just going to enjoy showing you what my room looks like and believe it or not I'm not happy with it and as soon as this video is on my channel I will be working on it again because I've got a lot of things that I want to change already and I think I'll always be the same I'm always going to be tinkering with this room making it look that little bit better for the way I like it I think it's part of me now I think every game collector who has a games room always wants to mess with the room and make it look that little bit better but I'm going to keep Waffling on guys, this is going to be a long video, so if you stick with it all the way through guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy this room tour, because it's all going to be changed again in the next six months. So uh, I'm going to leave it here guys, it's great to be back, enjoy the video, and uh, as always, I am Snake 7 keep playing, and always keep watching. Enjoy guys. Okay, let's start at the beginning and this is of course my brand new IKEA cabinet which I bought at the beginning of the year and as you can see it's housing a lot of figures and games and the storage at the bottom there which I'll get into. This is replacing my old red shelving that I used to have. I've lost a lot of game shelf space but in the long run this looks hell of a lot better and I'm more happy with this. Uh, so before we look at that cabinet I just want to swing across and show you a picture that's been hanging above my door for a few years. Still there, Rich. This is, uh, was painted and given to me by Richard Turner. Very happy with that still. Always will be above my door, bud. And then we'll move across now to the top of the shelf and we'll start with the World of Nintendo Link figure. Next to that, I've got my Nintendo Switch Breath of the Wild collector's box set. And in front, we've got my Bowser remote control cart. And then across to the opposite side and this is my Metal Gear Solid box set collection so you've got my Metal Gear Solid Rising Revengeance, you've got my Japanese Metal Gear 3 box set, my PS3 HD collection box set, my Japanese Metal Gear Solid box set and then next to that is my Japanese Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty box set and finally you've got the Metal Gear Solid 5 box set. Above that You've got a sealed Donkey Kong board game which I bought from the memorabilia in Birmingham this year. So back, pan back a bit and then we've got the first two of four little cabinets. As you can see there's figures in there now, something that you haven't seen before. So we'll start with this side which you haven't seen before. So open this cabinet. And um, before we start with these guys we'll just pan down here and show you my uh, Breath of the Wild sealed amiibos uh haven't opened these ones yet uh haven't wanted to to be honest because they're so nice in the packaging um there are another set of four coming um hopefully i can get my hands on them uh no doubt there'll be scalpers on ebay ripping us off and charging us three times the price like there have been for the last set of uh zelda figures and also uh the uh last in the um smash brothers set I'll get them eventually, I'll just wait until uh, they've uh, 
lost the interest in the Amiibos and they're selling for normal prices like normal people can buy. But anyway, that's my Amiibos from Breath of the Wild. And then we just got a little bit of uh, memorabilia from the Nintendo Switch day that was in London at the beginning of the year. I didn't actually go myself, but I just thought I'd try and pick some up off eBay and I managed to grab some. Uh, so it's just a nice little bit of memorabilia for the Nintendo Switch launch. And then we've got there a Japanese uh, Legend of Zelda concert CD. I do want the limited edition of that. I will get that eventually. Now, let's pan back and show you something that you've never seen before. Now, these are my sideshow collectible figures. Uh, you now know I'm into Star Wars. Uh, I love my Star Wars figures. And it just... I just wanted to collect something rather than just games and um, I've wanted to do a collection of these for a number of years. They ain't cheap, that's why I've only got five, so I've been buying these over a good nine months now. And uh, the first five I've got, of course, this is the first one I bought at the back, which is my prototype Boba Fett. Uh, really, really happy with that one. Then the next one I bought was the Scout Trooper, the limited edition, and as you can see he's got a better premium stand. Then the next one was my ATAT driver uh, from Empire Strikes Back. Then the next one was this one, which is the new uh, version of the TIE Fighter pilot from Episode 7. And then finally, I bought this one from the memorabilia also. This is the Snow Trooper from Episode 7. Detail um, are absolutely amazing. Uh, absolutely love these figures. I do have a few more coming at the, the end of the year. So no doubt I'll do a video on those, um, but that's my beginnings of my Sideshow collectible figures. So that's cupboard number one, guys. So let's just shut that up. Now, the next cupboard, of course, if you'd have watched the video, you'll know who this is. This is Artorius from Dark Souls. My first figures collector's uh, figure sits absolutely perfectly in this cupboard. Uh, I was really, really worried about it at one time because it's so big. Um, I didn't think it'd fit, but it absolutely fits sweet in there. Got a bit of cheap lighting, as you can see, on the top and on the bottom, but it really does set it off in this cupboard. Do have another one coming in the next couple of months, so I'll be doing a new video on the next Fursa Figures figure uh, from Dark Souls real soon. So that's cabinet number two, and uh, that's Artorius sitting really nice in that cabinet. So... Down to the bottom two. Now, obviously you can see me Amiibos there, but we'll just do this one. This is like uh, not staying this way uh, much longer, but for the time being, until I get something else to put in this cupboard, this is the way it's going to look. So, as you can see, I've got just a bit of Master System um, stuff in here. I've got my latest Japanese games that I bought from um, the Revival. And then I've got my 3D glasses, I've got my control stick and my light phaser in there. So that's quite a nice little setup there. Down below, just a few figures. Um, and then this was given to me uh, last year, I think, from Craig's ear again, which goes nicely with my uh, FM Towns Marty Splatterhouse. That's one of my prizes games for the FM Towns Marty. Never get rid of that. But that's uh, a nice little figure set up there. It'll do for the time being until I get something else. But that's cupboard number three. And then finally, let's move over to cupboard number four. And these, of course, are my unsealed Amiibo set now. Um, I'm not up to date with them. But I've collected a majority of all the Smash uh, Brothers figures. And um, I've got all three shelves full at the moment as I say I've got more in order I'm trying to get the new Zelda ones and I'm trying to pick up the last of the Smash Brothers set uh, but I don't just have the Smash Brothers set of course I do have Splatoon and other Amiibo that did come out I've got even the Skylanders one there's a Skylander uh, Donkey Kong and over there we've got the Skylander um, Bowser which is a Skylander and an Amiibo in one but I really like the way these have been housed now in this cupboard. A lot, lot better than in the boxes. I'd love to have kept them in the boxes, but I just didn't have the room. But the way they are at the moment in this cupboard, they really, really do look uh, really nice. And they're kept a lot, lot cleaner in there as well. So happy with that. So that's cupboard number four, guys. So happy with them 
four cupboards for the time being. They might stay as they are. The Amiibos will only get fuller and that one will change shortly. So, four drawers at the bottom and we'll start with this side and uh, this drawer isn't um, the best drawer by any means but this is my miscellaneous drawer, just covers and underneath there you've got some wires and some controllers so it's not the neatest of drawers but once it's um, closed up it's much better and uh, a lot, lot less messy. At the bottom here I've got my drawers for my hats of course that's my new one which I bought uh, a couple of weeks ago the new Spider-Man one but yeah they're all in there nice and tidy and uh, that's just the way I like them keep some dust free as well so I don't have to hang them everywhere so that's my cupboard for my hats and then this drawer is a little collection um, I haven't really showed anybody this is my Commodore 64 collection um, I do love the Commodore 64 as you can see I, I did originally have one then I sold it and I decided to get the games back bit by bit so you know there's some uh, classic games on tape that I've been picking up over the years, The Last Ninja of course, Fight Night and um, in Infiltrator, you know there's, there's a fair few here, Indiana Jones, you've got like, Nemesis and uh, some big box games and some classics down here, obviously that's a quite rare, Friday the 13th one, uh, my favourite game on the system which is Hero. And I've got Ghostbusters. So I've got I've got a few good ones. Biggles was quite a, a really good game. And then Hypersports was an absolute classic game. So uh, I say I'm collecting the tape variants. Uh, I'll do a video on them one of the days because I do love my Commodore 64. I do have a couple of disc games. One being the Dam Busters. Um, I've sold on my uh, disc drive now. So I've got that left. And there's another game I'll show you shortly. So I'm willing to trade them off for something if anybody uh, is interested in the disc-based disc -based, uh, Commodore 64. So I've got that one and that's that drawer. Now at the bottom is the final drawer. This houses my Neo Geo MVS. But here's the second game, Weird Dreams. That's also disc-based for the Commodore 64. So if anybody's interested in that and the Dan Busters for a trade, just let me know. Uh, right, so let's crack on down to here, and this of course is my MVS Neo Geo. You've got my Art Fighting 3 Ironclad Brickinger uh, box set there. Then we've got here, we've got um, my Last Resort. We've got a spare case, this is Windjammer Drive, I've got it in there. I'm going to use that for Art of Fighting, uh, get a decent cover made for that. And then of course down here we've got my Pulse Star, Prehistoric Oil, Blazing Star. Shock Troopers 1 and 2, and then my Metal Slug collection. I just need Metal Slug X and Metal Slug 5, and then I'll have all the MVS carts for the Metal Slug collection. And so it keeps it quite tidy in here. I don't have to worry about where I'm going to stick to these games, because as I say, my shelving, haven't got much shelving much uh, anymore, so I've just got to prioritise what I buy and where, where I stick it. So that's that cupboard, guys, in a nutshell. It stores everything I need. Keeps a lot of junk hid, uh, including wires and things like that. But most importantly, it houses my figures, which I'm really, really happy with. So there's my IKEA cupboard, guys. Um, right, we'll leave it there for this section, and then we'll move over to the TV and the console setup. So let's move on to the second part of my room. Okay, so let's start with the TV and games console setup. It isn't brilliant at the moment, but it's what I'm playing uh, and it's the way it is for the time being. So let's pan back. As you can see, I now have two TVs instead of the usual three. Um, just a quick scan down uh, at the consoles that are out at the moment. Uh, I'll go into detail a little bit more in a bit about the way things are set up. Uh, just pan back. Uh, over here you can see I've got my record player with my records and... Uh, just pan back a little bit more and you can see now I've got myself uh, a brand new chair and a brand new stool to sit on. Uh, yes, there is a bit of a white theme 
uh, but that is specifically because this room is so small uh, I need to put a bit of light in here just to give it that bit more dimension to be honest and make it look a bit cleaner and brighter uh, so I'm really happy with what I've got but let's uh, crack on guys let's move in closer and let's get on with what's down here <clears throat> so as I say I've still got my or one of my original Bang & Olsen's uh, I sold on my smaller variant to a YouTuber Richard uh, Crash Test Gaming local YouTuber so he's happy and uh, that's for all my retro games over here of course I've got this TV now which is my 40 inch Samsung 4K TV uh, just enough for me uh, as I say this room isn't huge so uh, it absolutely looks uh, superb for me and uh, you know it plays all my games in HD and 4K so I'm well happy with that the setup at the moment goes like this uh, my Star Wars lot there. I've got my PS4 Pro in the corner. And then next to that, I have my Mini NES, uh, which is lovingly been hacked by Mr. Tutti UK. Uh, so it's got every single NES game on there ever, more or less. Next to that, of course, is my Nintendo Switch with the only three games I possess at the moment, which is, of course, Ultra Street Fighter, Mario Kart Deluxe and Zelda. Um, then next to that is my PAL uh, Master System. Uh, I've been playing a bit of Master System lately. Uh, the Japanese one also, but I've uh, put that one away, obviously, due to an accident. I'll go further into that when I do a video about it. Uh, but for the time being, I've got the PAL one. Um, I've also got this plane on the uh, Bang & Olsen, which is my uh, King of the Fighters uh, 94 rebate. Uh, which is one of the first Japanese PS2 games ever bought. But underneath, you can see I've got like four sections, two, three, four, uh, with funky blue light lighting underneath, which is quite a good effect. But under this one, I've got my uh, original PS3. Next to that, I've got my Darth Vader PS4. And then over here... I've got my Genesis, uh, which I had off Pete Snestastic uh, a good couple of years ago now, still going strong, right? And then next to that, of course, as you can see, um, I have got an extra space, but the thing is, obviously, I can't get under there, so I'll just basically use that for storage. Um, you can pull these down, and you can see I've got like, some electronic games and some uh, other things in there, which just basically is kept out of the way and kept tidy now the second drawer underneath is where I keep my MVS player so I can play my Neo Geo MVS on and then next to that is the bit of a mess uh, which is the wire section where unfortunately some wires have to go so this is all my setup so it uh, sets all my uh, retro systems up and also my PSVR wires are under there, which is uh, just here on my stall. So there's my PSVR, and that's my Pro Controller for my Wii, or should I say the Switch. I knew I'd get that wrong. So back down here, and to the final cupboard now. This is housing a console that will be moved shortly, and this is my Sony PSX system with the built-in hard drive. I really love this console. It's what I used to play, uh, obviously, a lot of my Japanese titles on, my fighting games. So that will be housed there for the time being. But will shortly be moved into a better place. Because as I say, these are okay in here. But you need to leave these doors open because over time the heat will build up. And um, it may do some damage to the consoles. That's why I've uh, come up with a different plan for, especially consoles like these, uh, which run and will get warm over time. So... That's my PSX console, love that console, uh, which of course is playing this, which is King of the Fighters Rebate, but I may have mentioned that already. Anyway, let's pan back guys, hopefully this shoddy camera work is doing justice, but there you go, that's a setup at the moment, um, you know, it isn't uh, the best, but uh, you know, it's utilising what I want to play at the moment, um, the consoles I need out, as I say, things are going to change, so I can have uh, a variant, like, 
different consoles out rather than just having the select few because I'm having to take consoles out of the boxes and to play them and then when I'm finished put them away and I don't really want to do that I want them out so I can pick and choose any console that I want any time that I'm playing sort of thing so that's the plan but that'll be in the next video but right up above you can see you got a bit of a blank space I do have plans for this um, so that'll be sorted out within the next video uh, and as I say I'm going to be working on that within the next couple of weeks over here we did have a picture up there which fell off the wall uh, I'll talk about that later and then we still have my two framed uh, pixel art pictures from Soulfunk Retro which he kindly uh, gifted me in Blackpool a couple of years ago uh, just a selection of uh, King of the Fighters characters my favourites from the series which is one of my favourite fighting games anyway now we'll pan back and this is the record section and uh, as you can see uh, I love my vinyl um, I've definitely gone big into my vinyl, but we'll start with the top uh, and of course you can see something that I've been waiting to grab and get hold of since I was about six years old, which is obviously an original Stormtrooper helmet. Um, I've wanted one of these ever since I've seen Star Wars, a massive Star Wars fan. Now you should know by now that. And uh, as I say, really, really nice helmet. Underneath is the moderately average record player uh, with a... A subwoofer underneath which gives it the extra sound which I need and it makes it sound a hell of a lot better than it does with those crummy speakers on the front there but it will do for the time being so uh, we have next to that a uh, bit of metal memorabilia there some uh, this is an Iron Maiden um, beer bottle a uh, limited edition one it's not a bad beer actually uh, but I've managed to keep hold of one just for keepsake because it is a, a decent little bottle over here we've got uh, a lamp, Star Wars lamp, which isn't working at the moment, unfortunately. But uh, that'll be sorted soon. So let's get down to the meat and potatoes. Now these are the albums that I've got. So we've got uh, like a soundtrack and a gaming soundtrack section. A rock section uh, with my gaming books. Down here is All Iron Maiden. And then here is a uh, mishmash of Beatles. Uh, funny enough, Huey Lewis and the News, yeah, I'm a big fan of kind of Huey Lewis and the News back in the old days. And um, just uh, a couple of uh, laser discs, which are my uh, Godzilla collection. So, let's just have a look up here first. Not that you haven't seen these before, probably, but just a varied selection of my vinyls. Um, the likes of the Mondo vinyls, which, of course, are my uh, Castlevania collection that I've got. I do have... All three of the original NES uh, vinyls, one, two, and recently got three, which is there. Uh, I do have Castlevania 4 coming, which I'm very, very happy about. Easily the greatest game and one of the best soundtracks, in my opinion, ever. Uh, right, so I'll get to the side, so I don't have to pull them all out, so you'll be able to see exactly what I've got. So, this one you've seen, this is the a limited run games uh, Darius soundtrack uh, this was available but 250 copies so I was very lucky to get one of them and then we have uh, this is Galactic Empire this is like a rock based band that play all Star Wars music uh, really really good album that is uh, a very peculiar original 1960s Batman soundtrack now this is an original uh, and it's really, uh, I've kept uh, hold of this, my uncle gave it me 25 years ago easy, 30 years ago and I've never never got rid of it so really happy to have kept that in the condition it is and it does play quite well. Uh, then these are my recentest purchases, these are my three episode seven, seven Star Wars soundtracks from uh, I Am Shark. There are four but I only managed to pick three up so this is the Ray version. And then there is this one, which is the Poe version. Uh, and then there is this one. And I guarantee I'm going to forget the name of this edition, but this is my favourite one. Um, it's Captain Phasma, that's right, Captain Phasma edition. Uh, really, really nice artwork. And they are all coloured vinyls as well, which uh, I do have pictures up on my uh, Instagram. Right, so more Star Wars, episode one. Let's talk about that the better. Uh, the original Star Wars soundtrack, um, obviously a picture disc version. 
more Star Wars, more Star Wars, more Star Wars, Back to the Future, um, Iron Man, and then we'll get to Gremlins, which I haven't opened. This is the limited edition Gremlins soundtrack. Really, really nice Mondo soundtrack there. I haven't got to open and play that yet. And then finally, gaming soundtracks. So I have, of course, the Contra 3 Alien Wars soundtrack, which is absolutely superb. And then we'll start with, of course, these, which are my data discs. So I've got from uh, the most recent, which is 11. 12 has just uh, been um, pre-ordered, which is Altered Beast. So there's number 11, all the way to number 1, which is, of course, Streets of Rage. Now, or most of these I've got. Some of them are limited editions, uh, limited editions, excuse me. Uh, but um, most of them are just coloured vinyls, so because I do prefer the coloured vinyls over the uh, limited edition. Uh, I like the splatter versions, but not the two-tone effect. So anyway, happy with them. Uh, we've got a limited edition Killer Instincts soundtrack. It's come out for only two days. Uh, can't get this anymore. Uh, the very first I Am 8-bit soundtrack I bought, which was the Battletoads. And then two fantastic soundtracks. One is my... Res Infinity, and that is absolutely superb. That is absolutely love uh, the package that you get with that. That is really, really nice. And then my favourite, of course, is my Street Fighter 2 soundtrack selection. Really, really happy to have had this and get this. Um, really, really nice. More soundtracks to come in the future, I guarantee you that. But that's my um, film soundtrack and my gaming soundtrack. Now, down below, of course. I did say a bit of Iron Maiden, but you do have the odd Bruce Dickinson. This is my signed Bruce Dickinson album, Tattooed Millionaire, from many, many years ago. I've always kept hold of that. And then we've got some various 12 inches. I haven't got my singles here at the moment, but I do have a lot of Iron Maiden singles as well. So these are just a few of my 12 inches from Iron Maiden, uh, which are all originals, of course. No re-releases. And then, of course, we've got, if I can get there, excuse the camera, we've got a few albums, um, which is the likes of Power Slave, of course, Live After Death, and we've got uh, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, a little favourite of mine. And then we've got uh, Fear of the Dark, and then the most recent album, of course, is Book of Souls. Um, which is uh, not a bad album, actually. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to see in this tour. Um, I really just uh, couldn't do it due to work because I'd just started my new job. So uh, I couldn't get a ticket and I couldn't go in the week or the day that, that was actually playing. So, But that's my Iron Maiden collection. Really happy with that. Right over here, a bit of miscellaneous rock. So a bit of Black Sabbath there. And... Um, Let's just move back a little bit. Sorry about the shoddy camera work, guys. And, of course, we've got the likes of Soundgarden. Uh, God rest his soul, Chris Cornell. Uh, but that was the last Soundgarden album, so I was really happy to get that. I got that about a year and a half ago. Um, one of them, my favourite albums, which is uh, Super Unknown from Soundgarden. And then there's just a mishmash of uh, rock, uh, unknown bands and things like that. But let's get to the, the proper stuff. So we've got here a few... Gaming books. I've got a brand new one I've just ordered, which I'm really happy about, which is coming shortly. This is a games machine uh, compendium. It's got consoles and handheld uh, from 1972 to 2005. I used that to research all my consoles that I wanted and uh, eventually got. This, of course, is one of my favourites, which is my uh, Suzuki Games Workbook. All about Yu Suzuki. And the nice little thing about this is you get this CD in it which uh, has some classic Dreamcast ports of the likes of Outrun and um, you have uh, Paradrift, uh, you also have Afterburner and um, Space Area and I think there's one more but it's the only way you get to play those games on the Dreamcast so you know this book isn't cheap by any means but it's still a really really nice collectible book to have and I'm really happy to have that so let's try and slot that back in there uh, my Playing With Power book, that was kindly gifted to me from Stu UK. Uh, definitely one of my favourite books, uh, which is my 
Super Famicom uh, box art collection, which if you haven't seen this, this is absolutely fantastic. Um, just goes through more or less most of the best um, Super Famicom games uh, you can buy and uh, all the, the box art and the description of each game. Definitely a very good guide for a collector. There's no two ways about that book. Absolutely fantastic book. Really, really um, not happy that I didn't get this special edition. I'm really gutted about that. I should have bought it, but I regret that. And now it's gone and it's going to cost a bit of money to get one. But this book is the Sega Mega Drive Compendium. Now this one is a bit of everything. History on the console, got artwork, all the different console designs through the ages, schematics. I mean, there's some serious detail about this uh, console and the games that was developed and things like that. Fantastic book to have. Uh, and this was kindly donated and gifted to me by Chris Shanks a couple of years ago. Uh, so really, really happy to have that. And uh, a fantastic book. Right, one more book. Uh, and that is Push Start. Uh, now this book is basically an art book. Uh, and it's technically just like close-ups of um, pictures from classic games as you can see Castlevania there from all types of consoles across the board but it's just some fantastic artwork uh, as you can see and it spans from the very beginning right up into modern gaming um, to the likes of uh, we've got Thief there 2014 there you go there's um, Donkey Kong Country the new one so you know it does span across the years Grand Theft Auto so this is a fantastic little book and in the back of it you also get a little vinyl uh, and it's like a selection of uh, some remastered um, remastered classic games the like of course which is um, Space Area and such so I'll put that over there because it's darn heavy now the final book is of course my Retro Gamma magazine which started a little craze off and uh, it started me on the road to collecting for the Master System. I do have all 269 games now, apart from the foreign uh, games that have been added recently. Whether I get them or not, I don't know. I've got um, an itch to scratch concerning this collection. I just might be starting uh, getting uh, a few other games for uh, another collection to do with the Master System, but I'll get onto that in another video. But still got that magazine as I hold a lot of memories now uh, and the magazine that started it all off for me and then moved down to the final shelf uh, which of course is this shelf which as I said a few Beatles not everybody's into the Beatles and then of course we've got some like Back to the Future and then of course you were losing the news yes I'm a, I was a big fan still kind of am I like this band uh, all down to Back to the Future of course um, Got into got into the soundtrack and then thought, let's try the band, see how they play. And that was, just never looked back. I've got tons of stuff from them, singles, 12 inches, even other um, like uh, bands that was in before that was You Were Losing the News, like the locks of Clover and things like that. So I've gone through the years basically with the You Were Losing the News, but not going too much into detail about that. And then finally, these are just my Japanese Godzilla uh collection of Moss Mia laser discs that I bought so that guys is about it I think I'll leave that there for this section so let's just pan back and for the time being this is the way my setup is concerning my TVs and my game setup it's not the best at the moment but uh, I'll get there and uh, it'll all change for the better once uh, once I've um, started rearranging things again. So, right guys, let's just go across, show you the old shelf where the Nintendo memorabilia and little Sonic is, and then we'll stop here, and then we'll start talking about games. So, let's move on to the game section. Right guys, before we start with the games, I thought I'd show the consoles off. So, start with shelf number one. So we have my Japanese N64 boxed, my PAL original PS1. Uh, boxed my box for my PS4 Pro, 
my Bucks for my PS4 Star Wars Battlefront Edition, my Japanese Master System Boxed, my PAL Master System Boxed, my Boxed Neo Geo Japanese console, then some Nintendo goodness, my box for my Nintendo Switch, my boxed Virtual Boy, my boxed um, Super Famicom Junior. Next to that is my box for my NES Mini. Below that is my Wii U box, uh, the um, Super Mario Bros U and Luigi box set. And then possibly the greatest console ever made, the Super Nintendo, the NTSC variant. Behind that I've got two Super Scopes which you can't see in the picture. Then finally on the top uh, we have my Dreamcast Regulation 7, a Japanese variant, my PC Engine Duo RX boxed, my PAL Fatboy PS2 boxed and we have then my Japanese Panasonic Real 3DO FZ10 model boxed and then finally I've got my FM Towns Marty boxed. So we'll cut here with a quick snippet of what's downstairs on my shelves and then we'll get on with the games guys so let's just take a look what's downstairs so this is downstairs and these are the consoles i've got on my cabinet so you can see my nintendo gamecube charles customized japanese console my red nintendo wii um my this is called saturn uh, then we've got my boxed famicom uh, and next to those, I've got my American PS2 boxed, my PAL PS2 boxed, and then finally, I've got my Japanese PS2 boxed. So that is my present consoles up to date. So let's crack on with the games, guys. Okay, so this is cupboard one of my games set up, and uh, on this shelf, I've got my PS3 collection, my PS2 Japanese, PAL, and American, with a bit of PSP there, and I've uh, got my PS1 collection and down below I have got my PS3, PS4 and PS2 box sets which I'll come to lastly. So as you can see this is the very cluttered PS3 collection. I've slimmed down quite a bit on my PS3, PS2 box sets. Of course to having not enough room anymore so I've got to really minimalise what I buy and make sure what I buy I want to keep in the collection. So let's start with the PS3 collection and we'll start with this one, which is the Ultra Street Fighter 4 collector's box set, which was gifted to me by Daz Cajonis Deloro for my birthday this year. And then we've got down here, Chromo Phantasm, the Blaz Blue limited edition box set, the PS3. I was going to get rid of it due to the slight damage there, but I thought about keeping it instead. Next, we've got one of my favourite box sets in the PS3 collection, which is my Catherine box set. Very sought after at one time. Absolutely fantastic game, never played anything like it before. Um, quite quirky stuff you get with this box set, obviously a pillar case and a pair of boxer shorts with Catherine's face sprawled all over them. Um, very strange, but still a fantastic box set. There is a rarer box set than this, an American one again, uh, and it had a pair of knickers in there, each to their own, but it is very, very still sought after and very expensive to buy even now. Uh, next, we have got the Nino Kuno box set. I've literally still got the seal on that. I haven't opened it, and uh, no doubt I'll buy the second one and do the same. Uh, we've got a couple of PS4 box sets here. Um, we've got my second in the series of uh, Odin Sphere. Absolutely love the original on the PS2. Uh, my sister bought me that for Christmas. And then, of course, I've got my Darius Burst Chronicles, the limited run limited edition which I've still got sealed which I won't open because I do have uh, a standard edition to play and then over this side I'll just move my Blaz Blue as I so show you the rest of my games a couple of more box sets Grand Theft Auto Soul Calibur 5 which isn't the greatest in the series we have got uh, Super Street Fighter 4 the Japanese edition we've got the HD collection of Under Defeat um, we've got a Cheapest Chips Games, but it's not a bad little box set for what it is. Painkiller. Um, we have Skyrim. And then we have Prince of Persia. Nice little box set. The game wasn't that bad. I thought it was quite good. And then finally, we've got my NTSC Metal Gear 4 collector's box set. Now, at the top, I'll shift Catherine out of the way so I can show you uh, the games at the back. 
So you can see there's a selection of games, most of the steel books. All these games are, I wanted to keep and play. So you've got the likes of Marvel vs Capcom 3, God of Wars there, Call of Duties, Castlevanias, Devil May Cry's, Dark Souls of course, Ninja Gaidens and uh, Star Wars, a lot of fighting games in there. And then it goes down another row. You got Mad Max Payne, Resident Evils again, uh, Metal Gears, God of Wars, Splat Houses, Assassin's Creed, Bioshocks, you know, fighting games, all the usual games that I've built up over the years. There is a third layer, but I'm not going to take all these games off just to get into that. So that is, in a nutshell, guys, my PS3 collection. As I say, it's a bit cluttered. Um, but uh, unfortunately it's the best I can do. I won't be buying very many games now for the PS3. Only like rare and obscure fighters which I do like to buy every now and again. So that's the PS3 collection in a nutshell. So let's move down to the PS2. Now before we start with the PS2 collection just a couple of randoms here. We've got another PS3 fighting game. This is uh, from Gareth Sprites and Bites I bought a couple of years ago. It's Persona 4 Arena. Uh, great fighting game. And um, we'll start with this little collection here. This is the PSP collection. Uh, the games I just wouldn't get rid of. I haven't got a PSP anymore, but I'll pick one up eventually. But these are all great games as far as I'm concerned. For me, these are the ones I sit down and play. But firstly, I've got the third birthday, which is the third in a series of Parasite Eve. I always like them games anyway. So I've kept hold of that box set. And then we've got next to that, we've got the Castlevania... Dracula X Chronicles, which is a must-have if you got PSP. The Ultimate Ghost and Goblins uh, PSP game, great classic game there. The Soul Calibur Broken Destiny, another great fighting game. My Prize, which is my Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, signed by Hideo Kojima. And then we've got Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops. And then finally we've got the Collector's Edition of Gran Turismo. But that is small and exactly all I need for my PSP. Um, I don't think I'd pick any more up to be honest because I'd be quite happy with that. It's just a, a gap filler that I used to, to play every now and again when I get a PSP eventually. Anyway, PS2 games. So we'll start with the few American games that I've got at the front. So we've got, of course, God of War 2. Player's Choice or Greatest Hits of God of War 1. One of many variants of Resident Evil 4 that I own. So that's the standard edition. We have got the Metal Slug Anthology, uh, quite a difficult game to get hold of even today. Uh, the American Ico, American Shadows of the Colossus, which I'm looking forward to the revamped version for the PS4. The second in the series of Curse uh, Castlevania, Curse of Darkness. A game I've never come across ever since I bought it, weird game, Pirates Legend of the Black Buccaneer. Uh, never seen it again ever, ever since I bought it. And uh, we've got Metal Gear, Subsistence. Couple of more variants, I wouldn't mind of them. We've got uh, a quite rare Swedish steelbook edition of Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater sealed. We've got, funny enough, uh, the steelbook of Resident Evil 4 PAL edition. And then to top it off, we've got the American steelbook edition of Resident Evil 4. <laughs> Next to that, we've got a couple of Metal Gear uh, Sons of Liberty Japanese editions from my good mate Raz, which he gifted to me. Now, just behind this question mark box, I ain't going to go fully into what's behind here, but I've got some PAL games, which I've literally got 80% of, got rid of. But there's a few more American games there. You can see some good ones. You've got Rule of Rose there, Manhunt, Clock Terror 3, Transformers, Malice, The Mega Man Collection, Shinobi, Roy Gar, uh, Firefighter, FD-18, Odin Sphere, uh, Akami, um, I think that's a Sega Legends game and in a random tennis game at the, the end there, Japanese one. But uh, I might do a PS2 collection one of those because there isn't that many games to show you anyway. But this is just a, a quick showing you what I've got. But anyway, on to the Japanese games. My favourite part. And these are all my fighting games, of course. King of the Fighters. King of the Fighters Nightfall Rebate. This is my Neo Geo collection. Uh, these are a number of games that come out in a collection with... Neo Geo Classics on, so you've got Last Blade 1 and 2, just go through a few here. You've got uh, Art of um, Fatal Fury Collection there. Um, there's Fatal Fury Collection Part 2. Um, 
We've got uh, King of the Fighters Nests. Um, I love my King of the Fighters, of course. Uh, another King of the Fighters. Uh, that's the ultimate match. And uh, finally, we've got the Samurai Showdown Spirits Collection there. So we've got a number of those uh, in the collection. Then we've got, yet again, more King of the Fighters. King of the Fighters Neo Wave. King of the Fighters Maximum Impact Regulation A. Quite a tough little uh, fighting game to find, that is. And then we've got, of course, King of the Fighters 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003. And then we have one of my favourites on the system, which is easily Kuto Nakin. Fantastic fighting game, that is. And then some random ones. we got uh, Street Fight EX Plus 3. Not the greatest in the series, but still worthy of having. And then we got Capcom Fighting Jam. Another nice game to add to the collection. And then we have Melty Blood Act Cadenza. Uh, a nice fighting game there. Then we got Tekken's. Virtual Fighters, and um, we've got the Sega Rally 2006, which was only released in Japan. And then we've got this game at the end. Um, I'm not pronouncing it because I couldn't pronounce it, even if I tried, but you know the cover. It's a great shooting game, and a nice little collector's box set. So that's the PS2. Uh, kind of a short version of it, because I've got power games at the back underneath there. But as I say, they're all standard. They're only ones you could only get in the UK, all like uh, exclusive ones. Um, but as I say, I'm happy with the PS2 collection as it is. Um, I don't regularly play it that often, apart from the Japanese fighting games and the American games anyway. So um, I'm happy with that. I'll just continue picking up fighting games for that system because that's what it's made for as far as I'm concerned, fighting games. So let's move down to the PS1 collection. Very small, um, minimalistic, but it's got exactly what I need in the collection. That's all I'm bothered about. As long as I can play the games and I'm happy with them, that's a fine by me. So, starting with, of course, Castlevania Chronicles and Castlevania Symphony of the Night collector's box set. And then across the way here, we've got some Metal Gear, some more gifts off Raz. I've got uh, Japanese Metal Gear, Japanese um, Metal Gear Solid again. Um, and this is the American Metal Gear Solid, which I picked up. Then we've got the American Final Fantasy VII, the uh, American Resident Evil 2, and then two great games, which is uh, Parasite Eve 1. Absolutely love that game. And uh, the harder to get, Parasite Eve 2. Fantastic games. Then, uh, just down here, just to give you an inkling of what I've got in the collection, because I'm not getting right behind i got all the old Fightfuls, of course, Ten Shoes and Resident Evils. Classic game, uh, Blood Omen Legacy of Kane. Absolutely love that game. Odd Worlds Exodus. Agent Armstrong. Now, absolutely love this side scrolling platform game. Brilliant game. Very underrated, but so difficult. It's unbelievable. Still a great game. Karushi, of course. Vagrant Story. Classic game. Uh, all the Ridge Racers. Roll Cage. A couple of Japanese games. Uh, we've got my. Rival Schools there, and uh, next we have uh, Clock Tower 2, um, can't really play to be honest with you, and then a couple of American games, my uh, Silent Hill in a red cover, I put that in there years ago, um, Street Fighter EX Plus 2, um, Strikers 1945 Japanese edition, that's a great little shooter, and then we have uh, my Final Fantasy 8 box set, which I've put a little bit of damage on. I did that the day I bought it and I was gutted about that. Uh, behind there then, just a, a few more games. And then we've got one of this set for the Capcom Collector's Editions. That's the um, Ghost and Goblins collection. I, I would like to pick up the rest of them. And then behind there, finally, is my Tekken 3 box set with the uh, PS1 pad in there. The first variants of the vibrating pad. So I was happy to keep that. I've had that for years. Right, that's my PS1 collection. I uh, haven't gone into great detail, guys. As I say, you know, there's nothing uh, fantastic that sticks out there apart from my Castlevanias, obviously. Um, and then let's move down to this last section here, which is all my box sets. So I'll just give a fleeting glance through these. So firstly, we have got um, The Last of Us. This is the Ellie edition. Um, happy with that. Fantastic game. Didn't buy it on a PS4. Just happy to play it on a PS3. Underrated game here. Really great box set. 
and that's enslaved very very good game that was um, as I say very underrated also uh, then we've got uh, Mortal Kombat collector's box set now behind that is my Tomb Raider the original Tomb Raider that's the with the figure in and that the tin great little box set that is then we've got the Metal Gear Solid 4 uh, which was a definitely hard game to find at one time you give for hundreds of pounds at one time not so nowadays I'm assuming but still great to have in my collection uh, strangely enough Avatar um, even that was quite sought after at one time I couldn't understand why but the game isn't great anyway um, then we've got my American Street Fighter 4 box set which is much better than the PAL variant I gotta admit I actually got a movie in there and everything behind that we've got uh, HMV exclusive Killer is Dead strange game brilliant game though um, behind that we've got my Alien vs Predator and then we've got at the front here my Resident Evil 5 American Collection Edition. Then next to that is my Stars Raccoon Collection, which is consists of all the Resident Evils up to Resident Evil 4. Um, I've actually just opened this just to look at it. I've never actually even played one of the games, but as you can see, it's got all the collection in there with a few bits uh, of collectible items. Really nice little box set to have. Yeah, at the back of that, we have got my Dead Space. Move that Resident Evil out of the way. Brothers in Arms, which I've had for a while. Um, Duke Nukem Forever. Uh, I liked it. It was worth a shot and worth a play. And then finally, we've got more Resistance, Fall of Man 2. Not a bad first-person shooter game. So that's that top section. So I'll pop them back. So they don't fall over everywhere. So let's move down now to the bottom and final section, which is here. Now, a uh, couple of box sets here. My Japanese Lords of Shadows sealed. I've never opened it. Absolutely love the Castlevania series anyway, so really happy to have that. My Soul Calibur, the American edition. This is the tin. And this is the variant where you, you know, the last edition where you could play Darth Vader or... Um, Yoda, uh, and this is the Darth Vader variant for the PS4. Really, really great game. And then we've got Tron Evolution. Um, not the greatest game, but the box set itself is really, really nice. I just love the colour and the, the, the shininess of it. Um, but this comes with, if I can turn it round for the proper way, of course, it comes with the game, it comes with the light cycle in a nice case. Uh, and I got this very, very cheap, like uh, off Amazon, uh, Amazon.com, uh, a couple of years ago. Really, really nice collector's box set. Behind that is Last Guardian, of course, uh, which I bought this year. Fantastic game. Uh, PS4, we've got my King of the Fighters, the latest edition box set, which I bought at the beginning of this year also. And then, last but not least, we've got two e Capcom editions. This is my Biohazard Revelations 2 e Capcom edition, love these variants, and then we have my Biohazard HD remastered for the PS3. This is the uh, uh, special edition, also. Really great content in there, the map and everything. I really, really do love that. So that's those, and then finally, we'll get into the three big box sets that are sitting over this side. Well, let's pop Tron back first. Actually, leave Tron there. Side. So, next one is my Tekken 6. I've kept that for some reason. Um, I really didn't like that game. I know it's disappointing to say, but I didn't. Uh, but I've still kept the box set. I'm not about to get rid of it. I will get Tekken 7 eventually. Uh, then, last but not least, are these two box sets, if I can get one out. Now, these are for the Neo Geo collection that I was talking about earlier on the PS2. Uh, and the first two editions come out with a box set and you add a um, Neo Geo Stick 3 in there, uh, which is basically a PS2 convert for of the Neo Geo pad. But this is there's two variants of this game. You had the two tribes and this is the one I got with the Rising Sun on. There was another one. A uh, great game, of course. Never used a job pad, not about to either. And then this is the first edition, which I really, really love, which is a fantastic game anyway. This is Mark of the Wolves. And uh, this has got the Neo Geo Stick 2 in. And this is obviously, as you can see, it's like a wine colour 
uh, really really nice stick I've uh, took this one out and looked at it and net I've used it once I think but these are really really nice uh, box sets really love these so that is my PS3 slash PS2 games and box sets let's pop that back in there sorry about this guys right there we go I want to put all these back properly like so so there you have it guys that's shelf number one with all the box sets that I still have as I say I did have a hell of a lot more um, but they have all gone there so um, that's shelf number one so let's move on to shelf number two which is going to be a fleeting glance at my Master System games, my Sega Master System games. So let's move across now and get straight onto it. So here they are. And uh, as I said, I now have a full set of 269 Master System games. Uh, really, really happy. All in great condition. All got the manuals. Um, and if you followed my Man vs. Master System over the last three years, I did take my time on it. But, you know, I was enjoying collecting for this system. And uh, I found... I found love for this system because I never collected this system as a kid. I bypassed it, went straight to the Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo. But really, really do appreciate this system for what it is now. And uh, very happy to have the full set. So, we'll just... There's no particular order at the moment. And as you can see, this is in the single shelf. And um, just to show you that these are doubled up. So you can see there's two rows and then another two rows behind. I would like to put these in a different place to show them off a little bit more, but for the time being, they fit nicely in this unit. So just uh, let's have a look at what I've got then. So we have, of course, Outrun 3D. Uh, there's my 3D set up there. Home Alone, uh, quite a difficult game to find, especially with a manual. It is seriously difficult to find. Street to Rage 2, I kind of like that game. Uh, great port for the system, considering. And, uh, oh, there you go, that's gone back there. Uh, of course, the final game that I actually got my hands on, which is, uh, if I can get this out, Masters of Combat. Uh, not an easy game to find, and as I say, it's only rising in price. So, very happy to have that at last. And then we've got a selection of ultimate covers. I love these covers. Uh, Adam's Family. Brilliant game that is. Absolutely love that game. Uh, we've got Road Rash, of course. Um, this is one of the first expensive ones I bought uh, when I started collecting. And not the best in, in any shape or form. This is uh, Championship Hockey. Um, and then we have, of course, Incredible Hulk. Uh, Robocop 3. Mortal Kombat 2, which is a great version uh, on the Master System. I really do like that. And then uh, the Dragon, uh, which ain't, it's a totally different game altogether uh, what, than the fighting game you can get on this, uh, the Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo. Um, we've got, of course, Boggy Run, another expensive title, uh, which is one of the banes of collecting for this system. Next to that, of course, we have another one, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bee Machine, which isn't an easy one to find. Uh, Power Strike 2. Uh, another expensive one and across the way is the most expensive one of course which is Smurfs 2 around the world uh, well happy to get that early uh, got it mid collection so get all the hard ones out of the way if you're going to start collecting for these get them out of the way first because they're only going to go up in price uh, what else we got right this one was quite uh, hard to get Master, Master Games 1 because you have to get that with all three manuals in which ain't an easy thing to do Flintstones, <coughs> arguably, without a doubt, one of the worst games on the system. Um, what else is there? You've got the Sonics there. Um, Sensible Soccer, great game. Clave Masters, a, a nice little shooter. I really do like that game. Obviously, Ghosts and Ghouls. Right, let's move down. Uh, we've got, uh, of course, Ghostbusters, great game. And then we have Spider-Man. Love that game too, very difficult. Uh, down again, the Asterix collection. One of them is a bugger to find, I can't think which one it was. Um, Alex Kidd. Superman weren't easy to find either. Uh, Zillion, classic game. Zillion 2 of course as well. 
and then we have um, Ultimate Soccer, which is quite a hard one to find, mid-price game. Um, Daffy Duck also, not an easy game to find. Daffy Duck in Hollywood. Uh, down again to the final selection, uh, we've got Golden Axe Warrior, a great RPG that is like a very Zelda-ish kind of game. Um, Masters of Darkness, really good Castlevania clone, easily one of the best platform games on the system. Shinobi of course, the classic Shinobi. And then down the bottom we have Aliens 3, Vigilante, a favourite of mine, Wonder Boy, Renegade, Golden Axe, Game Ground, and finally Wonder Boy in Monsterland. So that's just a fleeting glance, guys, of my collection. I have got plans to continue my collection, believe it or not, for the Master System. Uh, but that's for another video, guys. So I'll be talking about that in my next update, which I'll be doing shortly. But that is my Master System games, guys. All 269. Apart from the arguable one or two that's been added recently, um, which are like Spanish versions or Portuguese versions, which at the end of the day I don't class as part of the collection. They're not PEL. They're not English. So why collect them? So there you go, guys. That's my Master System collection. So I'll cut it here. And then we'll move on to shelf number three, which is... Mega Drive, PS4, Dreamcast, and uh, Neo Geo, Sega Saturn, and my Nintendo Wii, Wii U. So I'll leave it there, guys, and we'll get back to you shortly for the next cabinet in the collection. Right. This is shelf number three. Bit of a mix and match here. So we've got my Japanese and NTSC Genesis uh, Mega Drive games. We've got my PS4 collection. My Japanese um, Dreamcast collection, my Japanese Sega Saturn PC Engine and uh, 3DO collection, my Japanese Neo Geo collection, my Nintendo Wii U collection, and then three uh, random boxes, two box sets, and a console. So we'll start with the top, and as I said, this is my Japanese slash Genesis Mega Drive collection. So of course we've got the Mighty Splatterhouse 2. A recent purchase KG Kai, great little fighter. And we've got the small box edition of Batman. We've got Juju there. And then behind there, of course, we've got the brilliant Splatterhouse 3. Any Splatterhouse game I'll, I'll want for any system, no matter what. It's my favourite series of all time. So let's shift these off here just to give you a closer look at the Genesis games at the back. Some good. Genesis games at the back there, really good ones. Sorry about the shoddy work, guys. So we've got Battletoads, we've got Wings of War, we have got Thunder Force 3, we have Lightning Force, uh, which is Thunder Force 4, we've got um, Contra Hard Corps there, we've got um, The Punisher, Comic Zone, great game, Beavis and Butthead, 3 uh, Streets of Rage, uh, we've got um, Cliffhanger, Ghostbusters. Aliens 3, Wardner, Mystic Defender, Flashback, Shikan, um, we've got um, Vector Man 2, Vector Man 1, Road Rash, and then we've got Sonic 1, 2, 3, Spinball, and Sonic and Knuckles there. Uh, we do have more at the back, but I'm not going into those, so we'll have a look at the Japanese collection. A few shooters, Hellfire. Um, and then we've got um, Atomic Robo Kid, Heavy Unit, um, and then we've got Cursed, uh, then we have Mercs, and we have Goinog, fantastic shooter but rock hard. Um, Thunder Force 2, um, we have Strider there. Um, classic Midnight Resistance, love that game. Fantastic Gunstar Heroes. Ghosts and Goblins, or Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, Dai Makamara, there you go, I remember their name. Um, the Young Indiana Jones, Instruments of Chaos. The classic Eastwatt. Uh, we'll move along, we've got um, Fatal Fury 1. 
Fatal Fury 2. And then we've got Golden Axe 1. Golden Axe 2. And of course Golden Axe 3. And then we have um, Bare Knuckle 1. Bare Knuckle 2. Bare Knuckle 3. And then finally three great games. Shadow Dancer. Mr. Deloro's favourite game. Um, then we've got Shinobi. And then finally Shinobi 2. So that in a nutshell is my Mega Drive Genesis slash Japanese games. There are a few more behind there. A couple of PAL games. I'll go into a full collection one of the days because I haven't got that many to show. So it'd probably be a good idea. So let's pop these games back up on the shelf. So we can move down then to the PS4 mini collection that I've got. Sorry about the shoddy camera work guys. Just bear with me. It's a bit difficult with one hand with a camera and the other's got to do all the work. So PS4. Uh, just your average stuff. We've got the turtles there guarding so I'm just going to have to shift these guys down so I can give you a little peek at what's behind everything. Um, this is going to be the easy, the hard part where everything's going to fall down on me. So let's move these. So what we'll do, we'll show, we'll show either side first, and then we shall look what's behind. So we have got Nia Atoma Steelbook. Absolutely, really wanted that. So hard to find that game. Then we have uh, Hyperlight Drifter uh, sealed, still not played yet. Uh, Res Infinity. Fantastic game. Mitsurugi Kamu Haki. Uh, limited run game. Really happy to have that. Uh, Pang. Limited run game. As you can see, yet yeah, not opened at all. Um, let's pop those down there. And then we've got Astel Breed. Limited run game, not yet played. Common theme coming here. And then we've got Cursed Castilia. Absolutely fantastic Ghost and Goblins clone game, but brilliant. Absolutely worth getting if you can get that, guys. And then finally, we have Darius Burst Chronicle Saviors, which is my standard copy from Limited Run. Happy to have that one. So let's have a look this side. Move my Limited Run box, which I kept as a souvenir. So we'll start this side, and we've got my VR game. So we've got Robinson the Journey, and then we've got uh, Battle Zone. Um, we have uh, Rush of Blood, brilliant little game, that is shooting game. Driver VR, and that's all my VR games so far. We've got Street Fighter V, the disappointing Street Fighter V. I won't go through too many of these. Um, Guilty Gear, Revelator, Japanese edition. Uh, then we have Beyond Good and Evil and Heavy Rain Collectors. That's quite a good little sh set, that is. Metal Gear, Phantom Pain, uh, let's go across just to some good ones. Slain, a great game, Back From Hell, great little side-scrolling uh, platform game, cheapest chips as well. Wild Guns Reloaded, definitely a must-have. This is a cracking game, um, Schoolgirl Zombie Hunter. Uh, Schoolgirls running around with heavy artillery, killing zombies, what more could you want? Um, great little game, never seen anything like it before. Worthy picking up if you can. You've got a code in there if you've got the Japanese account. So you can actually run around as a girl with a tiny little belt on. And nothing more than that, weirdly. Um, Japanese culture for you, the crazy dudes. But fantastic game. Then we've got some Resident Evil. Resident Evil Revelations 2. Resident Evil 6. Resident Evil 5. Resident Evil 4. Oh, what a surprise. Another Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil... Origins, which is uh, Zero and uh, the original Resident Evil remastered. Resident Evil uh, Biohazard, still haven't finished that unfortunately. And we've then got finally Dark Souls 3 sealed. How terrible is that? So let's move all these back and um, basically show you the next lot of games here. So we've got The Last Guardian. And we've got then Horizon Zero Dawn, which I haven't started yet unfortunately uh, then we have neo uh, another great game if you're into your dark souls series 
very similar. Uh, really good game, cheap game, uh, Little Nightmares. Uh, we have then uh, Gun Gal Double Piece, a uh, great little game. Uh, then we have the box set of Marvel Ultimate vs. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. It's like a, a re-release edition, uh, preparing it for the next Marvel game, which I cannot wait for, so happy to have that Japanese variant. And then finally we've got Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, nearly completed that, just got a final bit to do, so I'll finish that properly this week. Back onto the back games. So, where did we end up? Dark Souls, Until Dawn, yet to play that game. It's only just come on the PSN network, that is for free. Bad, I will have left that for so long. Um, King of the Fighters, uh, we've got the Batman, fantastic game that was. Then we have The Witcher 3, of course, just need the time to sit down and play that game. Um, Assassin's Creed Syndicate and then finally we have the box set of uh, The Evil Within which I'm looking forward to playing number two. So let's pop all these games back best that I can without dropping everything and uh, let's see if I can set this back up without uh, knocking everything over. So sorry about this really handy camera work guys camera work but um these things have to be done and then once we've done that we can move down to the japanese dreamcast so pop the turtles back up there two three so that is a very quick look at my PS4 collection guys and so we'll move down to my Dreamcast and as you can see I've got the Star Wars 3.0 figures so I'll have to shift these guys all the bad guys of course you've got to have all the bad guys Vader, Maul, um, Kylo Ren and of course Boba Fett so we'll start with Border Down classic shooter not the mo uh, most cheapest of games by any means but I bought the limited edition a while ago so I picked that up for about £100 and that was about four years ago. So I've kept that ever since. And then my most recent one, which is a Zero Gunner 2. I wanted this for a long time. Got this off Craig's here again when he was selling on a few of his games. So happy to have that in the collection. And then we've got uh, my Shenmue's, the PAL games I've never got rid of. I won't get rid of the Co-Veronica game, PAL. Got a couple of American games here, Jet Grind Radio. Dead or Alive, and uh, we've got Daytona USA, and then Pod Racer. Then all of these are fighting games. So, what we got, these are all, all backwards, so I'm going to have to pull them all out for you. So, we've got Last Blade, and then we've got Last Blade Final Edition. Uh, just going through a few of them Marvel, ver uh, Capcom vs. SNK Pro. Um, We'll just pick them out as we go along. Street Fighter EX Plus, uh, Street Fighter Super Street Fighter 2 EX uh, or X. That's one of the harder ones to find. Uh, then we've got uh, King of the Fighters 2002. Um, what we got here? Uh, Street Fighter Zero 03. That's matching service. Uh, you can play online with that one. Hard one to find. Expensive nowadays. The classic uh, Third Strike, Street Fighter 3. Brilliant game, that is. And then we have, just zapping through, uh, Capcom vs SNK. Um, what have we got here? Uh, that's Rival Schools for the Japanese Dreamcast. Uh, then the original Street Fighter Zero Three. 3. Uh, moving along, uh, Mark of the Wolves. Absolutely classic game. The second variant of Mark of the Wolves. And uh, then we've got Code Veronica box set. A few shooters now. We've got Sturmwind. Uh, we've got uh, Giga Wing. And then Last Resort. Standard Edition. Ikaruga. Great game. Mars Matrix. If I can get it out. You got Mars Matrix there, and then you got Gunbird 2 behind you there. And then to finish off, we got um, Marvel vs. Capcom. These ain't in any order, weirdly. 
and then Soul Calibur. And then we've got a few games over here from uh, NG Dev Team. Uh, this is obviously the uh, Gun Lord, the limited box set. And then we have um, DX, D, uh, what's that? Dukes 1.5 variant. And we have the original Dukes. And then uh, Fast Strike, limited edition. Uh, Cosmic Smash, love that game. And then finally, uh, Carus, which I got for really cheap. I was well surprised about picking that up. So that's them, guys. That's the Japanese Dreamcast in a nutshell. And uh, pop those games back on there. And then we'll move down to then the 3DO, the Japanese Sega Saturn. And, of course, the... Uh, PC Engine. So, Mark Holdsborough said to me in the last video I did, why are you hiding away your 3DO games? Well, I don't know more. So, there they are, mate. I've got my Super Street Fighter 2, my Japanese Road Rush, my Japanese Dragon's Lair, my Japanese Demolition Man, and then finally my Japanese Gex. Uh, the only games I've got, it's a very small collection. There's probably about two or three more I want, and that'll be it. Um... 3DO is a good system, but there weren't that many great games as far as I was concerned. So let's shift them out of the way. And uh, we'll just take a quick ganza behind here and see what there is. So we have got some big box. So we've got uh, X-Men versus Street Fighter. We've got uh, Fighters History Dynamite. The Street Fighter collection is called Sega Saturn, of course. Hakuto and Ken which is a strange fighting game. Uh, then we've got Dungeons and Dragons, classic game. Uh, Street Fighter, the movie, it is kind of a weird game, trust me. Uh, then we've got, um, this one is called Pekura Disakensku, or whatever, I don't know. Like a side-scrolling platformer from Atlas, uh, and a bit of a shooter to it as well. It's uh, not a bad game at all. Um, then we've got um, Twin B Deluxe Pack. Uh, another Twin B, I think that is. I ain't too sure. I can't remember where I picked up for this system. Uh, Dodon Patchy. Um, oh, it's Dodon Patchy, Dodon Patchy 2. Uh, Puzzle Fight, Pocket Fighter. Great little game that is. Uh, another one, I don't think that one works. Uh, Mega Mix Street. Uh, Fighters Mega Mix. What else we got here? Uh, fight, uh, Virtual Fighters Kids. Uh, World Heroes Perfect. And uh, let's have a look what else we got. Some of these are uh, Street Fighter Zero. Street Fighter. Uh, oh, uh, Marvel Ver Super Heroes. Marvel Super Heroes. Uh, Street Fighter Zero 2. I haven't got Street Fighter Zero 3. Just haven't bothered buying it. Uh, what's this one? Uh, Marvel vs. Uh, Marvel vs. Superheroes, I think, what's it called? Let's, let's check this title out. It's Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter. Get it out. Uh, Real Belt, Fatal Fury. Uh, Fatal Fury 3. And uh, then we've got a couple, Sega Rally and, of course, Outrun. Classic games. Move them across. Let's have a quick ganser at the U cards for the... Uh, and the CDs for the PC Engine. So we've got Jackie Chan. R-Type version 1. R -type, oh, Darius Plus. Forgot about that one. R-Type version 2. R to fight in CD. Street Fighter Championship Edition. Let's move that out of the way. Street Fighter Championship Edition. Um, and that's just a separate card. There we go. We've got a uh, pinball game. Alien Crush. Um, Outrun, Vigilante, cracking conversion of that. Splatterhouse, of course, can't do that. Splatterhouse, Drunken Master. Um, I'm not too sure what these are called now, uh, but they're great games, side scrolling platform games. Uh, Patland, that's another saving device. There's the Mighty Dracula X, absolute cracking game that is. Uh, Super Raiden, brilliant game. Um, Fat Fury 2 disc, and that's 
about it guys that's everything quickly sifting through that as i say i can do a collection of these uh, in the future just to show you what i've got so i'll just pop these back and um there you go 3do games full fr full front there you go mark so you can see them all so that's the 3do the pc engine and uh, a quick fleet at the uh games for the pc engine I'll do a, uh, another update video, just a collection video, because it's so small, the collections, it'll be easily done. So, moving down, and this is my Neo Geo uh, collection. Uh, really do like this collection. So, we'll start with this one, which is the Art of Fighting. And then, of course, you've got to have Art of Fighting 2. Um, we have Samurai Showdown. Samurai Showdown 2. If I can get it out. There you go. And then we have um, Fatal Fury, the original Fatal Fury. And then we've got Alpha Mission 2, great shooter that is. Then we've got Nam 1975, really, really great game that is. And then we have my start of my King of the Fighters, this is uh, King of the Fighters 94, where it all started. I have King of the Fighters 95, King of the Fighters 96. And then I've got King of the Fighters 97, Clamshell Cases, King of the Fighters 98, King of the Fighters 99, and then I jump to 2001, and the prize of the bunch is 2003. So all I need is uh, King of the Fighters 2000 and 2002, and then I'll have a full set of... King of the Fights for the Neo Geo, uh, which I'll be really happy about. Um, so that is my collection of MVS, um, MVS AES Neo Geo games. So moving down to the Nintendo Wii U. Uh, not much as you can see, uh, but we'll just take a fleeting glance. So of course I've got the Bayonetta Collector's Edition. Then I've got um, the Super Smash Brothers Wii U variant with the uh, the joy thing joypad so you can add extra players. Of course, you've got to have the sealed Breath of the Wild, and then I picked up Project Zero, which is quite a rare game at the time. Still haven't played that. Terrible. Um, my Wii U Luigi controller, my Splatoon box set, my Mario Maker box set. And then I've got a few games there. You've got uh, uh, Super Mario World, Tekken, uh, Marvel Super Heroes, Lego, Captain Toad, Zombie U, Yoshi Woolly World, Mario Kart 8, Zelda, The Twilight Princess. So let's pop these back here so we can go over to the next section. There is a collector's box set. Um, it's a nice little box set, that is. I did a video about that. That you, you don't need to see just yet. Because uh, it's a new, new little collection I'll be doing. Uh, I've got the Star Fox Zero. <coughs> it's okay. <coughs> Excuse me. It's okay. That's all I can say. Um, I did play it and uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. But it could have been better. It always could be better. But um, we also have the Mario Wii U controller. And then we've got Woolly World box set and Mario Kart 8. <coughs> Excuse me. And then finally, we've got the Breath of the Wild Limited Edition Gold uh, Player's Guide, which I'm very, very happy to have. I haven't cracked that open yet. I could do a video on that in itself. It's that good. So, there you go, guys. That is a very, very small Wii U collection. And uh, I will get more over time. I've really considered trying to do a full set of this thing. Um, but now it's come to an end this system i think it's going to be a difficult one to collect for because everybody's going to want to do the same to be honest um so that's it guys that is a very small uh wii u collection and then finally at the bottom my ps3 uncharted 3 uh treasure test the explorer edition my sonic generations box set and then finally my one of two game cubes that i only own now only own two and this is my white variant of it. 
so I've kept hold of that one. I have got rid of a couple of um, decent um, GameCube consoles, regrettably, but choices I've made and I've had to live with it now. So that's it, guys. Let's pop that back in there. And that's shelf number three. Ooh, sorry about the knock there. I'm not going to reshoot that just for that one second of uh, mishap. So that's shelf number three, guys. That's uh, a mishmash of games. Neo Geo, Dreamcast, Wii U, box sets, um, Dreamcast, as I say, uh, Sega Saturn, uh, 3DO, and uh, PC Engine, PS4, and to top it off was the Japanese and NTSC Genesis Mega Drive collection. So, guys... We'll move on to the final uh, shelf, which is all my Nintendo goodness. So uh, we'll stop here and we'll crack straight onto the very last shelf, shall we? Okay, this is my final shelf, and this is, of course, my Nintendo shelf with my little Wii collection, my prize collection, which is my NTSC Super Nintendo, and then we have um, Virtual Boy games, um, some. Super Famicom and then my Japanese N64 collection and then right at the bottom my GameCube collection and some Famicom games so let's go all the way to the top and just start with my small Wii collection nothing fantastic by any means just some of the usual games of course the GoldenEye the Skyward Sword uh, the Super Mario Bros uh, Wii tin, Super Mario Galaxy 2 tin, London 2012 Olympics, don't know why I bought that, the 25th anniversary Super Mario All-Stars, the obligatory Mario Kart of course, and then behind, nothing fantastic by any means, a lot of Lego games, Mad World uh, was a great game for that system, uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns of course, Wario Land The Shake Dimension, that is a, a good game as well, uh, let's have a look this side let's move theirs out of the way and then we have of course a lot of light gun games house of the dead 2 and 3 ghost squad the resident evil light gun games weren't too bad um sin and punishment was a good game uh the resident evil for the uh, resident evil 4 yeah another resident evil 4 for the wii was a good conversion i did actually enjoy playing that and then finally behind mario kart no More Heroes, of course, great uh, two games. Maru Massey, The Demon Sword, great game. Another great conversion of Punch Out there. The Metroid games, of course, great games. And a few more uh, Super Mario games. Uh, and Mario games, Paper, Super Paper Mario, of course, and the Mario Strikers. And that's about it, really. Nothing outstanding by any means for the Wii. Um, there are a lot of rare games for the system, but I just don't really like playing it that often it's just a, a bit of a pain to set up and it's one console i don't have set up at all so when i do get it out it's gonna have to be a good reason to be honest uh, but still nice little collection not going to get rid of it so let's move down to a little bit better collection and this is my uh starting of my ntsc super nintendo collection um as you can see i have a, a fair few my goal is to reach about 200, 250 games, and uh, I'll be quite happy with that. So I'm edging towards that goal. Um, still a few to get that I want, but they are super expensive. And with the recent mishap that I've had with uh, fakes that I bought, uh, unbeknown to me, um, it's just put more pressure on me uh, and be uh, got me to be a lot more cautious about buying these games now. Uh, so I'm really going to take my time on it. I'm not going to mess about it anymore. But let's start with just a couple of soundtracks. Super Mario 3D World. And of course the uh, Smash Brothers soundtrack from Nintendo Store. Get rid of those. And then we'll start with this one here. This uh, little game um, that I got for the collection. It's uh, apparently supposed to be quite good in a, a Rare RPG. Now obviously it's Earthbound. Uh, I've waited a long time to get hold of this one. Um, it's definitely one of the daddies in the collection. Obviously, in America, you could probably pick them up ten a penny, but over here, it's uh, in the UK, it's not exactly an easy task. Um, and I was thankful enough to get this from a, a UK seller, which took all the 
charges out of the uh, equation because obviously trying to order this uh, or buy this from America uh, would have ripped a hole in my pocket with the import charges uh, but this is absolutely pristine it's got everything with it the book the cartridge in great condition it has been checked and verified that this is an original copy as I say I've got gone to the extreme with these games now I've got to make sure every one of them are as they say and are original but very happy to have that one of about five RPGs or one in my collection because I'm not a massive RPG fanatic but I ain't too, uh, too far away now from getting all the RPGs that I need but that's the classic Earthbound so let's get that one out of the way and then just have a fly through my collection some great games in this collection and then the thing about this collection is I did sell half of it off originally and decided that I wanted to start it up again but the good thing about it is I kept some of the better games and uh, I didn't sell off the good games which is strange so let's crack on from the beginning so we have of course King of Dragons sorry about the glare but I can't be bothered to take them out of the covers one game I did keep from my original collection which is Demon's Crest and then a new one I had to source which was Final Fight 3 and then we have the classic Contra Wars, Contra 3, Alien Wars should I say and then we've got, of course, Turrican 2, which is uh, not an easy game and a very expensive game to find. And that was sealed, that one is. And next to that, of course, is Turrican, uh, the original. And then we have the mighty Turtles in Time, absolute classic game. Underrated Racer, definitely one worth to add into anybody's NTSC collection is uh, the Biker Mice from Mars. Uh, then we have... Knights of the Round, classic side scrolling beat em up. Easily one of the best beat em ups on the system, and that is Batman Returns. Can't beat a bit of Batman. But also, continuing the Batman theme, this is uh, The Adventure of Batman and Robin. Not an easy one to find in good condition either. Uh, the classic Sunset Riders. Fantastic conversion of the game. So arcade perfect, I think, to be honest. Uh, then we have, of course, Zelda. Every collection must have Zelda in it. Um, not a bad platformer, graphically great game. Uh, maybe Mulloyd and Cold Shoulder, or Shadow, should I say? Get me, get that right. Um, we have the Mega Man X, the only one I've got on the NTSC. The rest are expensive, but I've also got them anyway on the um, Super, uh, Super Famicom. But continuing, we've got the Brawl Brothers, Peacekeepers, and we have Rival Turf, Phantom Twenty Forty Nine. And then finally at the top, we got Battletoads and Battle Maniacs. And then we have Battletoads, Double Dragon. Right, moving down. Uh, a couple of games that I kept in my original collection, which is my Nosferatu. Great uh, Castlevania slash Prince of Persia style game. Uh, really good game. Uh, and then uh, this is another one I kept in my collection, my original Ninja Warriors. Uh, Buster Bros, uh, which is Pang basically, uh, but renamed in America. Uh, the greatest game ever, Castlevania 4. Then we've got Double Dragon, Super Double Dragon, great game. Classic and super easy, uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Okay, maybe not. Um, quite a hard and expensive title to find, which is Mr. Nuts. Uh, not too bad actually. Uh, a great game, probably not heard of by most of you, Operation Logic Bomb, worth having a look at if you haven't played it before. Jurassic Park, uh, Joe Mack, Lost in Tropics, then we've got the Street Fighters, of course the Mortal Kombat, the Killer Instincts, uh, and the X-Men games, and then of course uh, Death and Return of Superman. So that's the first section guys. As you can see some great games in there. And let's pop down to shelf number two <clears throat> and at the front we've got two of our recentest games that are bought which is the mystical ninja uh been waiting for a while to get that and then the next one is joe mac which is one of the first releases it took me this long to get it uh really good game though uh much better than i uh, expected it to be and then we've got the one and only pal game um 
I've kept it for sentimental values really because um, I did own the PAL uh, system first and this and Castlevania 4 were the first two I ever bought uh, but I um, sent my copy of uh, Castlevania 4 to a, a good mate in America who's collecting for the PAL Super Nintendo uh, I just sent it as a gift uh, even though it was definitely my first game I ever bought I, I just thought he deserved it and it went in his collection but this one I've kept uh, this one is the Super Robot Tector uh, and this is day one release still in mint condition uh, and I've kept it for a variant reason as well because obviously it's uh, Contra Wars but it's robots instead of uh, army guys but uh, never get rid of it I'll keep it because it's sentimental value and one day I'll get a PAL Super Nintendo I'll probably play it again but there you go that is uh, the one and only PAL game and that's Super Pro Robot Tector Alien Rebels then we have finally this one which is the Bomberman Party Pack uh, which is quite expensive nowadays I picked this up about a year and a half ago for £50 I was very lucky because this is now quadrupled in price probably two two fifty to pick this up silly money really but uh, great condition comes complete with the multi-tap and uh, as I say it's uh, a really in great condition I have found somebody who does covers for these because this box is bigger and thinner than your regular log earthbound shaped boxes so I will be getting a cover for that shortly so let's pop up to the second part of my games collection and we'll start from the top so we have Alien vs Predator you either love it or you hate it I, I quite like it Aliens 3 if I can get it out I like that game really atmospheric Bomberman 2 of course the only two Bomberman to come out in the NTSC system Biometal not a bad shooter, I hate the soundtrack, that's why I'd like the Super Famicom variant. Uh, the classic Act Razor. And then of course Act Razor 2, which was graphically superior, if I can get it out. But absolutely ridiculously hard. Shame really. One of the turkeys of the bunch, shame to say. Terminator. Not a very good game at all. Then we have of course Vortex, one of um, a few FX chip games. Not the greatest game, but still part of the collection. The classic Rocky and Pocky. Uh, I'd love the second one, but that's just going up and up and up and up in price. I will get it eventually. Uh, then we've got Aladdin, Prince of Persia 2, which is a very sad sequel to the original. I love the first one. Absolutely played that to death when I first bought that. The classic Axelay. Love that shooter. Then we've got Darius, we've got The Adams Family, Pugsley Scavenger Hunt, which is a cracking game. Very difficult though. And then another two RPGs to the collection, which is The Secret of Evermore. And then the mighty Chrono Trigger. Absolutely love that game. And then last but not least on the top, Flashback. Bought this for the cover variant because it's different on the PAL and the um, PAL version. And the Mega Drive uh, NTSC version, the... the the cover variant's better actually on the American version. But um, moving down, and the, the game actually runs slower as well, unfortunately, compared to the Mega Drive. Moving down, so we've got uh, Star Fox, of course, and then Star Fox 2, the Time Walk edition. This is the Red Car edition, which I'm glad to have. I know it's coming out on the uh, SNES Mini, so people can give this a whirl. Don't expect too much from it. It's uh, not the greatest game in the world by any means. Then we have um, Bionic Commando. Um, then we have a good side scrolling beat map. I love Sonic Blast Man. I really want the second one. Really hard to find and uh, very expensive, unfortunately. The best wrestling game I've ever played for me, which is Saturday Night Slam Masters. Absolutely love that. Then we got Adventure Island. And then we got Super Mario Land, uh, World 2, Yoshi's Island. Mario All Stars, the Cracky Mario Kart. And then another RPG, which is the uh, Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. Super Mario World. Uh, Indiana Jones Greatest Adventures. Uh, Lost Dimensions. Terrible game. The classic rock and roll racing. An average R-type game, Super R-type. 
the Star Wars trilogy, Star Wars is easily the best. Empire Strikes Back a close second, but impossibly hard. And of course, Super Return of the Jedi. And then we also have the cracking Super Tennis. And then last but not least, Super Punch Out, which is a brilliant game. Bottom row, um, Spider Man. We have Spawn. Graphically good game, but very difficult. Supernova, a shooter. Bob, which is a, a nice little platformer. Um, Choplifter. Blackthorn, which is um, a flashback platform kind of clone, but uh, not a bad game at all. Really atmospheric, that game is. Hook, Pitfall, uh, easily one of the worst games on the system. Robocop 3, I can't even get off the first level, it's that difficult. Zombies, Ate My Neighbours, absolutely classic game. This is, absolutely love that game. Uh, I want Ghoul Patrol, the second one. I uh, really want to get my hands on that. Super Smash TV, Total Carnage, FX Stomp Racer, NBA Jam, the classic Pilot Wings, Best of the Best Karate, Super Metroid, of course, you've got to have that in your collection. Uh, a kind of hard to get hold of in great condition, which is the Legend. Had that off Retro Dave Nintendo. Uh, Cybernator, Doom, uh, great game, terrible music, and Combo Tribes. So that's the second section of my NTSC Super Nintendo collection. So let's pop these back up here. And then we'll move down to the final part. Uh, where I've got my last few games. Uh, sorry about the handiwork can there. Um, right, let's move down. So I'm going to shift these Virtual Boy games out of the way. And let's just... Um, Start and finish off with the Super Nintendo game, shall we? So as you can see, this is the final section. Uh, still room for more games there, but I've got at the moment my NTSC controller. And no NTSC system can go without the cleaning system. You must have the cleaning cartridge, if not get one. At the front we've got uh, my one and only loose cart game, which is Three Ninjas. Not the greatest game by any means, but uh, this is quite expensive, complete, believe it or not. Uh, but this was gifted to me by Pete when I bought a few of those collection of NTSC games off him a few years ago. So I've still kept that, Pete. And then we've got my Super Game Boy, which I need to get some Game Boy games for. Just the obligatory Donkey Kong and things like that I'd love to play. But still boxed and complete. And then my final lot of games for my collection. And we'll start with the top. So we've got a few SNK fighting games. We've got Fatal Fury. We have got then um, Samurai Showdown. Then of course the classic Donkey Kong. Um, arguably the second the second one is the best one. Donkey Kong 2. And then of course Donkey Kong 3. And then we have Space Invaders. It's not a bad quirky game. Quite cheap that was. And then Congo Capers, which it was gifted for to me by Alex Nintendo. Needs a, a manual, but I think I'll rebuy this because it is actually a great game, to be honest with you. Then moving down, we've got Blazion, an average shooter. Uh, the classic F Zero started it all off for me on the Super Nintendo, of course. Aero the Acrobat, Firepower 2000, good game. Very difficult game, though. Wolverine, Gradius 3. NBA All Stars, don't ask why I bought it. Wario World, uh, Woods, Pinocchio, Doom Troopers, good game. Uh, much like um, Probot Tector's uh, Super Probot Tector, or obviously uh, Contra 3, but slightly different graphics and uh, a lot tougher, to be honest with you. Uh, Magic Sword, uh, out of this world, cracking game that is. Judge Dread, Bubsy. Rocketeer isn't the greatest game. This game's got a little bit of memory for me because this is Pete Snestastic's final NTSC game he ever bought for his collection. So um, when he was selling them on, I just had to have this game. And it's not a bad little platformer, to be honest with you. Don't let the Michael Jordan thing put you off. It's actually quite a good game. Uh, we've got uh, the Magical Quest, Mickey's Magical Quest. F1 ROC, Mario's Missing, Mario's Time Machine, which ain't great games, and of course, Cool Spot. So guys, that ends my NTSC Super Nintendo collection. Um, so let's 
crack on now with the final few games um, and they are my virtual boy games which I bought um, just this year to be honest with you and uh, the ones I've got are as follows so let's pop them back up there so I've got this one which is uh, I cannot pronounce it but it's a shooter it's a bit log like Star Fox to be honest with you it ain't too bad at all so I've got that one and um, then I've got Vertical Force, which is another shooter, uh, and it's like a top-down shooter, not bad at all. <clears throat> and then we've got Teleboxers, which I do love this boxing game, it is not too bad at all. And then finally, Inner Mouse, which is like a Doom-style um, first-person shooter, which is definitely uh, a worthy pickup if you've got a Virtual Boy. And then finally, just a few peripherals. We've got, of course, this connection. So you, I'm, I'm not too sure what it does now. I think it just connects the power supply to the system. So if you have in batteries. And then finally, uh, wherever that may be, I've got the um, headset um, complete and boxed, which is a nice little uh, thing to have. So that's all my virtual boy stuff. And that's our shelf complete. So let's move down to this little lot here. And these are my super... Famicom games and my NTSC Super Nintendo uh, Super NC N get it right my Super Famicom and my Japanese N64 got ya so let's crack on guys and let's have a look at some uh, Super Famicom games now as you can see I've got a few of the good ones here I finished my collection off of the Mega Man games on the Super Famicom because I thought it was rather cheap and these are only going up in price i got this one and i got uh, x2 from wolverhampton about two three years ago and i picked them up 50 pounds for the both of them and nowadays you'd never get that and then we've got of course back to the future easily one of the best back to the future games uh definitely worth a purchase if you can pick that up guys the classic dracula x uh which i'm happy to have this version um, whether I'll try and get it again on the NTSC variant, I don't know. And we've got uh, R-Type 3, Third Lightning. Great game. Uh, love that shooter. Of course, I've got Axel again on the uh, Japanese variant. And then I've got this little game. I don't know whether most people would know this one. This is, of course... Um, oh my God, I can't remember the name of it now. Rendering Ranger R2. Now this game is uh, a side-scrolling shooter, a bit like um, Pro Protector, but it also has uh, side-scrolling shooter uh, like shooting levels in it, shmup levels. Um, one of the last produced games for the system. Uh, limited quantities only come out in Japan, but this is super super expensive now. Uh, really very lucky to have that. Um, that um, I bought from a pub. A guy in a pub for eighty pounds about five years ago, and nowadays you go and have a look at it, you probably pay about six hundred for the cart. So I'm lucky to have that. So at the back, let's have a look at the back. So we've got Adventure Island. Uh, we've got Haku Hakuto and Ken Six, a fighting game. Not a very good one at that. F Zero. I love that variant because you've got like the comic book style thing on the back. Uh, Mario Kart, of course, and we've got Art of Fighting again. Uh, uh, the harder to find Art of Fighting 2. We've got um, a gift off Raz. This is uh, Fatal Fury 2. World Heroes. Uh, we've got, of course, um, Final Fight and then Final Fight 2 to complete the collection. And that's my Famicom, believe it or not. I do have five new games ready to show you, but I haven't added them to this collection yet because um, that's for another video, guys, which won't be too far away, I can assure you that. So let's pop those back. But really do like my Famicom games. Unfortunately they're just getting just as expensive now as the NTSC Super Nintendo are, uh, which is a shame. But still, I still will buy games on that system if I can find them cheaper and they are playable. No two ways about that. So let's move over to my small Japanese N64 collection. So of course I have this. Uh, and this is a, a cracking game 
um, and I've totally gone mind blanked and I can't remember what it's called um, but this game uh, was spotted a couple of years ago uh, by myself in um, a shop in London uh, when me, uh, Daz, Conus Deloro and a few of us just went up to this shop and I can't even remember the shop name now but I'm not going to uh, try and think of it but we found this for £50 and this game is a hell of a lot more um, but uh, obviously he passed it on to me and sold it me for 50 quid. so one game I'm never getting rid of because it is a very rare game for the N64 um, comments down below if you know the uh, name of it I just it's just mind blank and I'm not going to try and think about it but still a, crack, a cracking game to have uh, then of course we got the Super Mario 64 this is the Rumble Pack Edition of the game uh, of course you've got to have Sin and Punishment this is a great game and then last but not least I do love this game this is the original Smash Brothers brilliant condition Smash Brothers it's great to have the original and at the back we've got the original Super Mario 64 we've got Mario Tennis Mario Golf uh, I think this is a shooter yeah this is one of the shooters on there uh, Star Soldier Vanishing Earth we have 1080 snowboarding uh, we also have the Pod Racer uh, we have Wave Race 64 of course we've got to have the classic F-Zero yet again with a comic strip on the back absolutely love that game the music in that is absolutely superb and then finally we've got Diddy Kong Racing which was a, a cracking little game show I never made a sequel to that and that's my N64 in a nutshell and I still can't remember the name of that game but no doubt you guys are going to comment at the bottom and tell me what it is but it's absolutely gone out of my head but there you go one of my prizes in my N64 collection very small collection nothing fantastic by any means but happy with what I've got Right, let's move down, guys, because this is getting on a bit, and this is my GameCube collection. But we'll start with the small Famicom collection, and I've got, of course, Rockman collection. So that's Rockman 1, Rockman 2, Rockman 3, Rockman 4, Rockman 5, and Rockman 6, and then... With that, we have also Mike Tyson's Punch Out, The Goonies, and then some nice box games. So we've got uh, Super Xevious, the Gold Cart Edition, and we have Family Boxing, which is a game I remember playing on the arcades. And yet again, too, I forgot the name of it, so you'll have to let me know what it is. But it's a cracking boxing game. Not a very good conversion on this. Um, on this Famicom edition unfortunately but still nice to have and then we have yes Splatterhouse for the Famicom had to get that game totally different compared to the original but still a quirky little variation of a, a cracking series in the game in games so that's um, Splatterhouse one I've recently picked up off uh, Alex Nintendo great conversion of Rolling Thunder happy to add that to the collection and then finally my mighty final fight which i bought for about 15 quid about five five years ago easily a super deformed character version of final fight not a bad version at all um and really in nice condition so that's my famicom so let's move over now to the final part of my collection which is of course my uh gamecube so there's my classic controller for the Wii, uh, the Switch. And then this is the third controller for my Wii U. And that's my Pikachu one, the Japanese one. Then we have my second console. And the only console I've got left for the GameCube, that's my Orange Spice GameCube, which I do like. And then a couple of random wallets, both off Retro Dive Nintendo. I do use one of those. And then we've got uh, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat Pack. With the bongo drums in. I uh, bought that a wee while ago. Um, still got that. So I'll shift that out of the way. And then these are all my PAL and American variant games. So we'll start with, of course, what do you know? It's Resident Evil 4. 
uh, and this is the GameStop Collector's Edition. Really nice little uh, special tin that come out. Happy to have that because that was well sought after at the one time. Uh, and we have Mario Kart Double Dash in a, slip, a gold slip case, which was uh, released for a short time. Happy to have that one. And then, oh, what do you know? Resident Evil 4. Uh, this is the PAL slip case variant. And, uh, you know, you can't have too many Resident Evils, can you? So, finally, another game uh, which I bought and haven't yet opened. This is sealed. Adama. This is like a tactical war game, but it's in a pinball variant. It's kind of strange. You've got like a mic with this one so you can shake commands and things like that. So, that's not a bad little game. So, what we got under here? So, we have, funny enough, a complete NTSC Resident Evil collection. Then we have a full Japanese uh, Resident Evil collection. So, it's Biohazard. Biohazard, uh, the original. These are all sealed, obviously. We've got Biohazard 2, Biohazard 3, Code Veronica, and, of course... What do you know? Resident Evil 4. Uh, Japanese variant. Told you you can't have enough Resident Evil 4. And then along the bottom here we've got... Obviously these are my NTSC variant ones because you can see the black label on the bottom. So we've got like, the logs, Metroids, the Prince of Persia collection, the Pikmin, uh, Killer7, Metal Gear Twin Snakes, Skies of Arcadia, um, Tales of Symphonia, Lego Star Wars, The Zeldas, Mega Man Collection, Chaos Field, uh, Paper Mario, Star Fox. This is definitely, I'd say, easily the best Star Fox game without a doubt. Star Fox Assault. And um, then we've got a few Mario games, Wario World, Luigi's Mansion, great game. And then, of course, you've got the Super Mario uh, Strikers, Toadstool Golf. And then at the bottom... Oh, we'll finish off with the actual American ones here. So we've got the likes of Rocky, uh, Die Hard, um, Auto Madalisto, Beyond Good and Evil, cracking game, Alien Hominoid, Time Splitters 1 and 2. And then we've got the Splinter Cell collection there. So happy with that. And then my small PAL collection, as you can see the labels are on the top this time. Uh, we've got, of course, you have to have the Metal Gear. Twin Snakes, the PAL version, and then we've got the Zeldas there, uh, Def Jam Vendettas, they're great games, uh, all the Super Marios, Beautiful Joe uh, 2, uh, we've got Beautiful Joe Red Up Rumble, Beautiful Joe uh, 1 there, 2 variants of yellow, and the pink version, Metroid 2, uh, Soul Calibur 2, which is a great game, of course you've got to have the F-Zero. Uh, F-Zero, that is absolutely a classic game Easily one of the best F-Zero games The GX, absolutely superb The two Star Wars You know, you've got your Rogue Squadron And your Rogue Leader And then, last but not least A full PAL collection Of Resident Evil um, So, there you go You've got Resident Evil Code Veronica Resident Evil 2, 3 And Resident Evil 0 So that's it guys, that is all of my GameCube collection without taking it too deep. Um, as I say, I can do collections of all my game systems and my, and my games that I've got over time if I wanted to. But I've really, really um, pushed this video to its limit. So it's going to be a long one. So I'm going to cut it short, guys. So that's it. That is uh, my GameCube collection. So I'm just going to put everything back and then tie it up. And call it quits on this room to up for now I will do an improved one over time uh, of course but I'll talk about that in a short moment let's just pop these back and uh, these are it's off further notice sorry about the tidying up guys but let's get everything off the floor just to finish up okay so I'll put that there Right, that's that's the lot, guys. So, basically, this is my games room. In a nutshell, stand up. 
Oh dear. As I say, it's, um, it has got smaller over time. I did have a hell of a lot more in this room at one time um, with other systems and other collections, but I'm totally happy with what I've got now. Um, and I'm just gonna build on it and um, take it from there and just see what happens in the future. As I say, I've got to really limit my time and limit my, sp uh, my games that I buy now, make sure I buy what I want to buy, um, specifically because to put in my collection because it's just the room, I haven't got it anymore. So I've just got to make the most of the room that I've got and just put the best games in my collection. So guys, I'm going to leave it here. And uh, that's my room tour. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll leave it here. Thanks a lot guys for watching. Okay guys, I told you it was a long one. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, as I say, things are going to change in the future. But, um, you know... I just needed to get this video up for you guys. But I just want to say thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for your support in this channel. Uh, thanks for the many new subs that I've got. And I'm edging towards that thousand goal. Uh, so there will be a compo uh, very soon. Uh, obviously once I've reached a thousand subs. But um, it's good to be back. Uh, do leave comments and subscribe as per usual guys. It's always uh, appreciated. So I'm going to leave it here guys. Thanks for watching. All the best. I am Cyber Snake 7. Lighters, guys.